You either use the internet for fun or you use the internet to grow. You're here to grow. Welcome to TRS Clips. I got to ask you a little bit about yeah. Rumi. Yeah, Who sure, sure. Who what was Rumi? <laughs> This is a very tough question, uh, but a very good question also. So, uh, Rumi, Jalaluddin Rumi, <clears throat> was at this peak period of Sufism. Um, he's born around, let's say, around 1200. Um, uh, and he, uh, give or take, a few decades there. and he is born in um, uh, in what would now be considered uh, the border of afghanistan and um, uh, tajikistan etc and then he migrates across persia and goes and settles in a place called konya it's now in modern day turkey and most of his poetry is in persian but he also has in some other languages he has also written turkish etc and in turkey he is a very big deal but he's also very big deal in persia because he writes in persian and in india also is a very big deal jalaluddin rumi and his uh, again um he's uh very syncretic he is um again very metaphysical he has a master called shams of tabriz and a lot of the poetry is uh, in praise of his master and he's he's um, uh, saying constantly that look you know uh this true faith can be found in any religion that is uh, uh you may think of me um it, uh as you want to think you may think he's saying to the muslims i am a muslim also but i'm not also i am a christian also but not also i'm i'm neither a turk nor a that same thing rabi shergil is using bullish is using the same thought mm. in uh, in his uh, this uh, uh bulla ki jana mai kon who am i you know uh, so he's kind of again emptied himself of he's reached that stage of fana you know where um, but he still uh, does his prayer his fasting and um, so a lot of his poetry is very beautiful you know um, um i could read an extract but we don't have the time right now um, and i'm sure anybody can find it online there's uh, a lot of his poetry available uh, so he's part of that same thought process and he influences also a lot of uh uh sufis after him including somebody as modern as iqbal uh, mohammad iqbal uh, from lahore who um uh in the 20th century uh, that you know your life should be spent in ishq that the core of life is ishq of love i think a lot of rumi poetry applies to a romance between Mm. to romantic partners a man mm, and a woman mm, 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 like if you actually read rumi poetry mm, mm. you could easily dedicate it to a girl or a girl could dedicate it to absolutely, a guy absolutely absolutely uh, but but that is not that's what, not the intention that's not the intention the intention is to dedicate it to god divine so the love. lover yeah so the lover is god so in sufi poetry it's very interesting the the seeker usually the man is actually the female because he's seeking the god and god is the uh, male in much of this poetry mm but how to explain it to people in the language that they understand for example <clears throat> most of our love stories which we think of now today are actually sufi tales heer ranja is a sufi tale because the sufis could not explain it in any other way soni mahiwal is actually a sufi tale sasi pannu is actually a sufi tale why don't you just in short explain the heer ranja story i can explain it but before that i'll explain the leila majnu story because this is the original story okay sure so lela i think do you want to add anything about rumi you know he um, his poetry is very metaphysical and mystical and uh, and nowadays people also perceive it as romantic but this is not really it's not really romantic because the thing was there was no way to explain to common people what actually the love of god is common people cannot understand it to explain it to people in their language what is divine love the converted it into ishq majazi ishq majazi means is ishq of this world love of this world love in this world and ishq haqiqi that is that is the love of truth the uh, true love uh, is with god now because he is using these metaphors to explain people sometimes thinks it's only about romantic love similarly when he's talking about intoxication and alcohol and drinking he's not intoxicated with alcohol he's constantly intoxicated by the love of god he's in another intoxication mm. he's intoxicated with something else is, so, it, is it true that he used to uh, have a meditation where he would twirl 
and then once he was kind of in that meditative state because of the twirling he, he would write poetry yeah see it's not clear whether he would twirl or this practice started after him or this was part of his practice but this was not the core of his practice he had already reached through meditation a very high level even before this uh, twirling this uh, uh, thing and this twirling also is very symbolic that is you are almost like the planets you are revolving in fact the usually the sufi master sits in the middle or stands in the middle and you twirl around him mm. on this axis and that's why the sufi master is also often called qutub qutub means like qutub minar it means he is the pole qutub means pole around which the world the spiritual world revolves you know the universe revolves that's why he is called the qutub you know um have you ever tried that kind of a meditation i have never tried <laughs> I've never I, i've never tried it but uh it but it is a form of prayer or meditation it is a form it. of a sufi meditation one of the forms of his school uh, uh mevlavi school this is one of the forms uh so yeah so he uh, so so when he's talking about intoxication or when he, when uh, when a sufi master is saying stain your prayer rug with wine it doesn't literally mean throw wine on your prayer rug you know it means uh, you you your whole being has to be intoxicated with that love of god you know with that love of uh, passion i can i can put it beautifully in a sheer by iqbal you know dayar ishq mein apna maqam paida kar in the world of love in the realm of love make your place naya zamana nayi subah sham paida kar create a new world a new morning and a new uh, evening in this that means change the physical order of the world itself this is because iqbal believed that you can actually be in ish even when you are so passionately involved in something suppose you follow some project very passionately suppose you really are in this world you want to be the best sculptor you want to be the best poet you want to be you are deeply in love with even some political cause you are in ish and he says that this life is superior to a life of mundane existence mm. like whatever you do do it with a passion that ish that passion will make your life beautiful meaningful happy and joyous only that life is worth leading which is led with passion to dayar ishq mein apna maqam paida kar so iqbal is then taking from rumi this thought you know and of course rumi is taking it from others mm. New clips released at the same time that a podcast releases. This is TRS Clips. Make sure you subscribe.